Today I'm going to show you how to take really high quality rendered pictures from The Sims 4. All you need is a PC and a few programs and I'm going to give you a step by step guide on how to end up with pictures like this. I'd just like to start off by saying that I am not an expert by any means, I've only been doing this for a few months and I'm just going to show you how I take these really high quality pictures. And the best thing is is that you don't need to be an expert yourself either, you can have no experience using external programs for The Sims 4, and you also don't need to spend any money either. Now as I said at the beginning, there are a few programs that you will want to download before you start rendering, and I'm going to link everything that you need in the description below, but I'm also going to go through it in chronological order. So stepping away from cast for just one minute. So so before you download any programs, I recommend that you make a folder in your hard drive or your C drive called rendering. And this is where you're going to install Blender later on, which I will kind of help you out with. So you'll install all of the programs into this folder. And I also recommend that you make some extra subfolders in this folder for later on. And these are Blender saves, that's for your Blender saves. Poses, which is where you store the poses that you've extracted. Scenes, which is where you store the scenes that you've downloaded online. And Sims, which is where you store the Sims that you've extracted from the game. You can make more or less of these folders depending on your preferences. This is just for organization purposes and so that it's easier later on. So now we'll move on to the required programs. So the first program is the Sim Ripper, and this basically extracts the Sims from your game and reformats them so they're accessible to Blender. And again, don't worry if you're confused right now because I'll go through this step by step of how to use this program later on. The second program is the Sims 4 Studio. This is a program that a lot of people use to make custom content, but you can also use it to extract poses. The same poses that a lot of people use in game for pictures can also be extracted from the game into Blender and then used to render pictures. And the third and final program that we will be downloading this video is Blender. This is the main program that we'll be using to render. Now those are all of the programs that we'll be downloading but there's also other assets that you'll want for rendering such as scenes which are basically the backdrops or the backgrounds or the kind of scenery that your sims will be in for the render. When I first started rendering I had no idea what scenes were or where to find them and there are actually quite a few different places that you can find free scenes online. One of my favorites is this Patreon page by HNX Creates. You can support them as well but they do have a lot of free scenes. And for today's example, I will be downloading this scene by them, the private pill scene. And don't worry because this isn't the only place that you can get free scenes, I'll make sure to link a couple other websites that you can get free scenes from. And the final major resource that I'll be sharing with you today is this pose master list page, it's really handy. It basically categorizes every pose that you would ever want in The Sims 4 for cast poses and game poses and poses that you can use for rendering as well. End game poses and rendering poses are kind of the same thing so make sure you're not downloading any cast poses for this. For the example that I'm going to be doing in the video, I'm going to use this pose pack, the Everglow pose pack. So so once you've downloaded all of the programs and maybe you have a scene and pose in mind, then you'll want to go into create a sim. So here I have my example sims for this video, Ceres and her boyfriend Curtis. I thought instead of just doing one sim it would be better to do two to kind of show you what it's like to render more than one sim because that can be confusing at times. So once you have the sims that you want to render, you want to go ahead and press play and just go into the game as usual. Oh no, my game's really bugged and broken, I don't know why, but anyways, let me pause. Um, once you've loaded in, you want to go ahead and make sure they're in the outfits that you want to render them in so they're not in their like hot weather or cold weather outfits and you just want to go ahead and save. Make sure you exit game and save or save as whatever, just make sure that they're saved in your game. The next thing you want to do is open up the Sim Ripper, which is the first program that I talked about and you want to go ahead and press select on this button over here. And what it's going to do is show you all of the saves from your Sims 4 game and you want to go ahead and press the top one because that will be the last one that you saved. Now you're going to see on the bottom left there's loads of names here and you can scroll down and see all of these names and the easier way to do this to find the sims that you want to render is kind of filter it over here. So I'm going to look for my female sim first and I'm just going to kind of filter it to find her. So I clicked on Ceres and now it's loading. It's going to take probably a few seconds, maybe even a minute at times just to load and it's just going to load up her model. So now we can see that Ceres' model has loaded in and once that's happened you want to go over here to the DAE because that's the file format that we'll be extracting her to or like changing it into and we're going to click over here and basically you want to go to your rendering folder so we'll go to rendering we will go to sims and I'm going to save her name as Ceres Winters. So that's why it's important to have a Sims folder so you can save all of your extracted Sims there. And now that she's saved in that folder, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for Curtis. So I'm gonna refilter it to male instead of female. So now I'm looking for a male Curtis over here. We're gonna do the same for him, D-A-E. We're gonna go to the rendering folder, it's already there, and we're gonna save his name as Curtis Erickson. So now we're moving on to the second program, which is the Sims 4 Studio, and that's where we're gonna extract the pose that we downloaded. 
Hey guys, it's future me popping in because I completely forgot to tell you one step before you go into the rest of the Sims 4 Studio stuff. And what you actually have to do before you do any of the Sims 4 Studio stuff is make sure that you download a program called Blender 2.70. I'll make sure this is linked in the description below and I should have mentioned this at the start of the video. So you'll want to have the newest version of Blender and also this 2.70 version. So once you have the 2.70 version installed, you'll want to go over to the Sim Studio and go to the top left and go to settings and you'll want to go over to where it says Blender Path and you'll want to go over to the three dots over here and you're going to try and find the Blender 2.70 file path. So basically wherever you installed the program. I would recommend that you install it in your rendering folder so it's easier to find and that's what I did. And I'm going to click on the Blender.exe file. Once you have that highlighted just press open and then press save. And now your settings have been saved and now you can resume with the rest of the tutorial. So when you first open this program there's quite a few different tabs and it can be very overwhelming but you just want to click on my projects. And it's going to open up this folder and we're actually going to go to where we downloaded our pose. And I store all of my poses in my mods folder because I like to use them in games so I'm going to click on the poses folder and I'm going to search for the Everglow pose pack. There it is so I'm going to select it and press open. So now it's moved on to another page and there's a lot of different tabs down here and what we want to click on is click down here in the second kind of row and click on clips and that will kind of show you all of the poses in the pose pack because usually you download a pose pack rather than just one pose. If you only downloaded one pose you'd only have one option but I've downloaded a pose pack so I have multiple to choose from and I think I'm going to choose this one over here. There's two options one for the male sim and one for the female sim. So once you know what pose you want to extract you want to click on one of the windows and over here it says in the description female so I know this is for the female sim. So once you've clicked on the window, you want to click on this green button over here, export. And this will open up this window for save as, and you want to go back to your rendering folder, go to the poses folder, and I'm just gonna name this one, Ceres Pose. It will say exporting animation for like a few seconds, and then you can go ahead and do the same for the mail sim. And also once it has exported, it will open up a window to show you where the file is, and it's in my poses folder as it should be. We're going to do the same for the mail post, so I'm going to click over here, it says mail. I'm going to export, and it's already in the right folder, so I'm going to name this one Curtis Pose. So now I have both of my poses in the folder ready to go, so now it's time to open up Blender. So now we are in Blender, which is probably the most intimidating program because looking at all of this, even though I know what I'm going to do, it does kind of feel like I don't know really much about this. Once you get into Blender, you should be greeted by a screen like this. And what you want to do is just click on general and what you'll see is this cube shape and what you want to do is just make sure it's selected, it'll be outlined in orange and just press delete on the delete key. So the first thing you want to do is go to file import and Collada DAE. And if you remember, that is what we reformatted or extracted Sims file to. So we're going to click on that and we're going to go to our render folder and go to the Sims subfolder and look for our extracted Sims. So I'm going to extract Ceres first. Just make sure they're selected and press import Collada. Once they're imported, they will look really weird, like very grayed out and just loads of orange dots and an orange outline. But what you want to do once you've imported them is go over here to the top right and what will be selected on already is this fully white circle that says viewport shading, in fact all of them do I think. And you want to go to the one that's next to that here, um, so you'll click on this and it will kind of bring a bit more colour back to the sim. Once you've done that you want to move your cursor back over here where it's in between these two windows so that the cursor actually looks exactly how it does on my screen and you want to drag the screen like this so that you can make a second window. So on the window on the right you want to just zoom in as much as you can just kind of like this so that you can see the sim in its entirety. And then over to the top left you want to go over to this little button here, this drop down, click over here and you want to go down to shader editor. And what you'll see is this dark grey black window which has nothing in it and you want to go over here to the top right, go to rig and press on the white arrow next to rig and you want to go ahead and click on your sim's name. So I'm going to click on Ceres Winters. And once you do that, you'll see all of these new menus with connecting lines and you just want to drag them so that they're more in view. And this can definitely be really confusing because there's a lot going on and you're like, okay, what did I just do? I don't understand any of this and don't worry, I'm going to help you out here. So once you've moved the menus more into view, you want to go to your keyboard and press Shift A. And once you've done that, you want to go down to Shader again and you want to go to Mix Shader. And what you want to do is actually put it in between these two menus here, in between the principled BDSF and this burgundy one here. 
and it will basically connect it in between the middle. Then what you want to do is go back to your keyboard and do Shift A again. And this time you want to go to Transparent BSDF. Again, it will give you a really small menu and what you want to do is actually put it on top of the bigger one here. So now we've added all of the menus in this section, we want to reconnect some of these lines. So down here at the bottom left where this orange menu is, you want to go to where it says color and click on the circle and it will kind of bring this new line up where you can connect to another circle. And we're going to go to where it says specular and just connect it like that. And you can see it kind of had some sort of impact on Ceres and we're going to do that a couple more times with some other circles. Over here where there's already an existing line between BSDF and shader, we want to move that and actually put it down to the second one here. And what we want to do with this one, we want to take from this top menu, we want to drag a line and put it where the previous one was, just above this one. And the last line that we need to connect is over here in the top left where it says alpha. And we want to drag it all the way across this menu to the menu that we added where it says FAC or FAC. So that is actually all we need to do in the shader editor and what we want to do now is go down here where it looks like a beach ball, click on it and we want to go down to where it says blend mode. It will currently be on opaque but we want to change that to alpha hashed. And we can see that it kind of had an impact on her eyes, it looks less blocky now and she looks a lot more like herself. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually go back up here to the top right where it says rig and we clicked on that before but this time we're not going to click on the drop down, we're just going to click on rig. And now you can see that it's added a lot of orange dots around her face and we're going to zoom in on one of those and what we're going to do is go right directly on one of these orange dots, right click and you're going to go to insert keyframe, location, rotation, scale. It should be the fifth option. So once you've clicked on that, what you want to do is go back up to this menu on the top left and click on non-linear animation and what it'll do is bring up this menu here. So what we need to do here is click on this drop down and it will bring down this orange bar here and we want to right click this and click delete strips. So now that we've done all of that, we are now ready to apply the pose that we downloaded onto the sim. So to do that, we're going to go to file, append, and we're gonna to go to where we saved our extracted pose. So you want to click on poses. I'm going to go to Ceres's pose. You double click that and it will show you all of these folders and what we want to go on is action. So we're gonna double click action and here we go, we have the pose. So we're going to click on the pose and we're going to click on the blue button append. So we can't actually see the pose yet because we need to actually add the pose to the action strip. So we're going to click on this button here, add, add action strip. And here is our pose. We're going to click on this and we can see that Ceres is now doing the pose that we want her to do. And this is basically the same process that you're going to do for all of your sims in Blender. I know that I went through this really quickly, but don't worry because I'm going to do it again with Curtis and you can also look back at all of the steps that I went through. So now that Ceres is doing her pose, I'm actually going to go to File, I'm going to go to Save As, and I'm going to go to Blender Saves, and I'm going to go ahead and save this as Ceres. And that will save as a .blend file, which we will then append into our scene later on. Import Coletta and go to and go to Curtis. Click on the shading option, make a second window, zoom in, go to Shader Editor, press the drop down, go to Curtis Erickson. You want to press Shift A, Shape, Shader, Transparent, BDF, BSDF, put that on top, Shader, Mix Shader, put this in the middle. Then you want to arrange things to so go to Color, Specular, Alpha, oh, Alpha FAC, bring this down here and bring this one here. Then go to Beach Ball, Blend Mode, change to Alpha Hashed. Go back up to Reg, click on that, zoom in on the orange dots, right click one of them, enter Keyframe, Location, Rotation, Scale. Go up to the top left, Non-Linear Animation, drop down, right click here, Delete Strips, File, Append. Go to where you saved your pose, Curtis Pose, Action, click on the pose, Append, Add, Add Action Strip. And there we go, now we have Curtis doing his pose, so we're going to go to File, Save As, and we're already in the right folder, so we're going to save it as Curtis. So now that I have both sims doing their poses, now it's time to open up the scene. Here I have my scene. It takes a little minute to load in depending on what scene that you've downloaded, so be patient if it doesn't load in immediately. And I'm just going to show you a couple of things. So this is my scene. You can kind of see the background. And this orange area over here is the camera. You can highlight things over here. Here's the sun and some other objects within the scene. So to bring your sims into the scene, you want to click on File append and you want to go to your blender saves and i'm going to append ceres first so you're going to double click 
And instead of action, this time you're going to go to object. And there's two things that you want to kind of highlight or append in this. So you want to make sure you have the control key and you want to click on Cirrus Winters. And then you also want to click on rig. So make sure that both of them are highlighted in blue and press append. And now we have Ceres in the scene. She looks really fitting in the scene. And if you want to highlight Ceres and control her around the scene, you want to go to rig, double click that, make sure you're pressing on pose and you want to go over to the left over here. And this is where you can move the Sim around the scene. I think for the scene, I want to have both of the Sims over here where these chairs are. So what I'm going to do is actually click on these chairs and just delete them out of the way. I'm also noticing that Ceres is a little bit too low to the ground, so I'm going to make sure that her feet are actually touching the ground. So it's the same process for Curtis, just press append. We'll go back and we're going to look for Curtis. Double click, go to object, press Curtis's name, control, and then press reg, and we're going to append. So here we have him and he will be labeled as reg001 and that's how we distinguish both of these sims and we're going to click on pose for him and we're going to go move and move him so that he's next to Ceres. Now people think that Blender is really scary but to be honest the most difficult part is actually trying to get the poses to match up but honestly this one doesn't seem too difficult. I think I might have actually got them to match up. I just need to make sure that their hands are in the right place and all of that. So now that I have my sims exactly where I want them, I want to go to the camera view and we can see the camera is a lot further away than I'd want. So I'm going to click off the camera view and move the camera. So we're going to click on camera and we're just going to move it much closer to my sims. I'm also noticing that my camera has a square kind of view and I want it to look more HD. So what I'm going to do is click on this tab. Oh no wait, no, this tab. And we can see the dimensions or the resolutions for my camera and I want to change this to 1920 because that's kind of the same format as normal sims pictures and most pictures in media. So now when I click on the camera view we can see it's a lot wider. So I'm going to keep moving the camera closer like this and you can also go over here to rotate the camera and you can do the same with sims and objects as well in the scene and I'm just going to do that, go back to move and just kind of move it up so that it's the way that I want it. So I'm really happy with how I've set this up. I kind of moved them back, deleted the rock, moved the camera back, and I'm going to go to the camera view and this is the shot that I have. So this is kind of like a little preview of what the rendered image is kind of going to look like, but not rendered. So I'm going to go off the camera view and I'm going to go to this tab, render properties, just above the camera one. So over here, it kind of lets you pick what engine you want your image to render in. Usually when you download a scene, the creator gives you a recommendation of what engine to render the scene in. Sometimes they'll recommend that you render in Cycles and sometimes they'll recommend that you render in Eevee. This one's compatible with both, but I prefer Cycles because it's more realistic to me. And I don't really do too much with the other settings because I don't really like to tinker with things. So now it's time to render and I'm going to go up here where it says render and I'm going to click render image. It will usually take a couple of seconds to a few minutes for it to render depending what scene you're rendering. You can already see that it's happening very quickly for me and look how gorgeous this is guys. And there we go, my image is finished rendering. So what you want to do to save the image is go up here to image and press save as and I'm just going to save this in my downloads. And there we go, that is the finished rendered image. I'm actually really impressed with how this one turned out. This is my first step-by-step -step tutorial, so I hope it was somewhat helpful to some of you guys. If you watch this video and still have questions, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments because I'm very happy to help. And if you encounter any errors at all, I'll try and help as well, but I'm also not an expert. This is definitely one of these things that will take practice, and the more you practice and refer to this video, the better you will get. If you do use this tutorial and render any Sims pictures, make sure to tag me in some of them on Twitter at D'AngeloXOX, I'd love to see them. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more like this. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are, and I will see you soon with another Sims 4 video. Bye!